So as Steph takes the ball up, you might find this alignment a little bit weird. Keegan Murray is the one that's matched up on him. Sabonis is in the corner on Clay, and Fox is matched up on Looney. After some methodical passing, the Warriors don't really get a good shot with a Wiggins mid-range jumper, even if it goes down. So why is this clip so important? To really understand the answer, you're going to need a little bit of context. Going into the series, one of the main things the Kings are going to have to figure out is how to protect Demonis Sabonis at all times on the defensive end. They first tried Demonis Sabonis in some traditional sets. First, they tried dropping him on any off-ball screen, but the reason why this doesn't really work is because it allows Curry and Clay to come off for wide open threes, and the Kings got burned pretty often from this. So in more traditional pick and roll sets, the Kings decided to trap Steph Curry as much as possible. Now, as you may know, this leads to the four on three situation where Draymond or Looney are in the middle of the floor and they can make the decision of whether dumping it to a cutter or a three point shooter or taking it to the rack themselves. The Warriors also had a very nice counter where Steph would dump it to Looney which flows into a dribble handoff for Clay into a wide open three. Now at times the Kings would execute this defense pretty perfectly when Sabonis and Fox would have their hands up and the help defenders would decide whether to stay on the shooters or peel off of them to help at the rim. But this defense once seen multiple times is very hard to continuously execute. So the Kings continuously threw different looks at Curry specifically where they would trap him at half court to protect Sabonis and zone up as they needed to. But similarly with trapping the pick and roll, this can become suicidal, especially once the Warriors figure it out, so it can only be used very infrequently. In the third matchup between these two teams in the regular season, the Kings had tried a myriad of those defensive schemes to no avail. The Warriors were dicing them up, especially when Sabonis trapped the pick and roll, and they were able to get three or four straight wide open threes, which prompted Mike Brown to call a timeout and instead implement the box in one. He specifically had Keegan Murray guard Steph Curry and De'Aaron Fox playing center field. Now, I liked how they use some man principles here. Fox initially helps on Curry's drive to give Murray some support, and after the ball swings around, Barnes and Fox communicate on the switch, and this eventually turns into a Wiggins contested jumper. And interestingly enough, on the next possession down, the Kings go with the same matchups, but now they're running man. The Warriors decide to just let Curry isolate, but if you're the Kings, you would take this because Fox is in the middle protecting any sort of Curry drive, so Murray has the flexibility to just stay in his grill, and he airballs this shot. The Kings didn't run the box of one again until Clay went out of the game. As Poole brings the ball up, Davion Mitchell is now the one face guarding Steph, and the Warriors aren't really sure what to do as they have really bad spacing with three guys overload on one side, so they eventually just settle with the Jonathan Kaminga three-pointer, which the Kings are always going to take. And they didn't show this hand again until midway through the fourth quarter. You could see Mike Brown getting the Kings in positions as the guards and the forwards switch spots so that the forwards are underneath the basket. And Terrence Davis and Malik Monk switch spots so that Monk is the one that's guarding Curry. So the way the Warriors counter this is by having Curry set the ball screen because his matchup is not going to leave him. And this leaves Wiggins for a wide open three, but he misses. Next possession down, the Warriors try to rush the Kings defense so that they're off balance. And it does work here as Terrence Davis is completely out of position and Fox doesn't really see that it's a Curry Draymond dribble handoff, but Curry rushes the shot and he completely misses the rim. Next possession down, Draymond sets a high ball screen, but now it's Fox who's guarding this pick and roll and not a big man. And Draymond just throws up a random hook shot at the rim and he obviously misses and he tries to cover it up by complaining to the ref about a foul. On the final time that the Kings run this box in one, the Warriors try to go fast again, but DiVincenzo just chucks up a contested three and it doesn't go down. Now after this, the Warriors were able to sub Clay Thompson in, so the Kings didn't really run this box in one anymore. But as you could see, when the Kings went to the box in one, it threw off the Warriors' typical offensive rhythm, which is exactly what's going to determine this series because of how dynamic both of these offenses really are. 
And with how complicated it is to guard the Warriors with all of these sets, I think teams, especially after seeing the Rockets have some success against them, have really resorted to trying to switch and eliminate mismatch hunting as much as possible. But they've never really thought about playing a zone because of how great the shooters are on the Warriors side. And if you don't play the zone correctly, then you can get a lot of possessions like this, which the Kings did experience. The Kings did try running a 2-1-2 earlier this season, but it really got carved up in two straight possessions and Mike Brown decided to forget it. But what is certain is that the Kings are going to have to mix up their defensive schemes all the time. And if there's one message that I really wanted to show today, it's that it's not exactly how often you run it, but when you run a defensive scheme like this. Remember, in the first clip, Sabonis was on Klay Thompson and Keegan Murray was on Curry, but they weren't expecting this defense and they eventually stagnated on the offensive end. All in all, the Kings only ran the box and won six times, but they also got six straight stops out of this. And I'm not going to be surprised if they start running this more in the playoffs or even implement a triangle in two with Klay Thompson on the floor. The reality is with Sabonis on the floor, there's always going to be a defensive weakness. And the Kings have had the best success rate neutralizing this with the box in one. We haven't seen a ran on the Warriors since the 2019 finals, so I'm really curious to see how Mike Brown really mix and matches his D's defensive schemes or tries to disguise them in specific ways. And if I was a fan of either of two teams, that's exactly what I would look for in the first couple games of this series. Now, before we end this video, I promise to answer a couple fans questions, which is something I'm going to do at the end of each video from now on. So feel free to leave your questions in the comments. With that said, here we go. I'm going to answer two today. The first one is by Spruce211. What do you think about the 76ers? Are they title contenders in the East or a step behind Boston slash Milwaukee? What about their game intrigues you? I do think that the Sixers are a step behind Boston and Milwaukee just because of Doc Rivers to start. I think the biggest weakness that we're going to see in the playoffs is how the Sixers react to Embiid being doubled in the post all the time. So that's something to keep an eye out for. In terms of the intrigue aspect, I'm always curious to see how Harden performs in the playoffs, specifically as a scorer instead of a facilitator. He might have to crank up the scoring to really neutralize the Embiid post up double teams. So that's what I would keep an eye out for. The second question that I received and wanted to answer was by Ezra Bolotsky. What do you see as a ceiling for the Clippers, the finals? Probably not. I think the Clippers are probably going to get bounced out in the first round just because they will definitely miss Paul George's presence and they're definitely going to need that to guard Kevin Durant and Devin Booker. If the Clippers do make a run, it's because their bench is really deep, but I just think that the combination of Mason Plumlee and Russell Westbrook is just going to give problems in the playoffs, especially with their offense. So, so that's where I kind of stand with that. Besides that, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.